Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis, and this is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Joining me in the studio today is Kurt Ducoch, Raymond Fletcher. Beach is back from Burning Man, and we have our guest today, uh, Dan Rush from the UFCW. Well, let's go right into our local news and uh, talk about what's going on across from UMC. Across from UMC, there's a flower shop that is getting quite a bit of protests um, going on. It's DeBella's Flower Shop because they want to be a medical marijuana shop. So they want to sell a different kind of flowers. Um, some residents don't want one in their neighborhood, and there there was a really, really <laughs> who oh hypocrite you said, <laughs> uh, and there was a really fiery meeting at the Southern Nevada Water District on Tuesday where residents um, for and against the dispensary voiced their opinions. Um, there are plenty of people that don't want it anywhere near their homes, um, but others feel that it won't be a problem. And Las Vegas City Council is going to meet next week so that uh, people can voice their opinions on the dispensaries that are going up in their neighborhood. Now, weren't some of these the same people that were crying, oh, I want it in a medical district, I want it here, blah, blah, blah. Well, now you have it across from UMC in what? A medical district. That's true. But, you know, you, people gripe. Yeah. You know, people find a reason to gripe in, in today's society. If it was a liquor store, it would be approved just like that. Or a gift shop. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, um, I think that I think that basically putting it in a medical uh, a medical uh, corridor is a really smart idea. Um, so, you know, if you want to voice your opinion, next week there is the Las Vegas City Council meeting, and you can talk about the shops that are going up in your neighborhood. And we also have some local news about Las Vegas. The city of Las Vegas um, is not going to allow neon on dispensaries. If you are between Sahara and where is it? Sahara and um, where is it, Kurt? Uh, Sahara and Washington on Las Vegas Boulevard, you are required to have a neon sign as part of your signage for your building unless you're a pot shop <laughs> in double standards you know medical marijuana uh producers um, um dispensaries you know aren't allowed to have all the the frills and everything that any other vegas community business would be allowed to have and that's such a shame that in 2014 there's this double standard you know we'll allow this business to have this but because you operate this way i don't think so and let me just say this if you go up that area look at that big old sign that says live nude <laughs> i have seen that it's it's kind it's, of it's, it's medical it's, though <laughs> <laughs> it's therapeutic well this uh the city scenic byways plan requires all establishments that are part of that boulevard to have signs that have 75 percent neon to preserve the roads storied and history um with glowing desert landmarks in the city of las vegas um they are making the exception for owners of medical marijuana dispensaries uh, because they the dispensaries are not uh, allowed to have the flash, the moving signs. They want them to look very medical in um, in nature. Um, in the case that we have dispensary applications that are located on the scenic byway, staff is recommending approval of waivers from the recommend uh, for the requirement for neon and animated signage based on the unique character of their use. Said Flynn Fag. Who uh, hit the door running after he made that declaration. He did. Didn't he retire recently to, like, Florida or something? He retired effective September 2nd. 
but now he's taking another job doing the same thing in some community in Florida. So he did a crappy job as a planner for us residents of Las Vegas. He's taking our pension money and now he's going to and retire and now he's going to Florida to do the exact same thing that he was doing here. That's not retiring in my mind. That's accepting another job, but hey, who am I? <laughs> well, that way he gets to get a pension and then go get another job too. Off the backs of hard working Nevadans. Is that yeah. what that is? He gets he gets a pension. Now he's gonna go to now he's gonna go to Florida and 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 work there for a while and get a pension there too. They they do it all the time. That's that's one of the reasons why people throw fits about public employee pensions. And that's some one of the reasons that when you hear about people getting raises in the city, why I'm always up in arms. <laughs> about about it because the amount of money that they're already getting why do we in our community have to pay these people so much more when they're bilking our our neighbors when they're struggling as it is and the real problem with it is is the is the the city worker the 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 planning worker the street worker they can't retire and then go get another job as a planner or a street worker or or a construction person for another municipality but the management can do it. And, and so we've got all these rich people attacking uh, public employee pensions, but they're attacking the wrong kind. They shouldn't be attacking the firefighters and the, and the uh, public works department. They should be attacking the management pensions. Amen, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, he's gone anyway, but, and, and marijuana sh uh, shops can't have neon signage if they're if they're part of that scenic byway they're getting a waiver from the city so they thank you flynn fag i'm sorry Kurt. so they can still set up shop there do they just can't put up the signage yeah that's right well so. i'm not used to being the the conservative one of the bunch but i i gotta say with everything we've been through all the changes that, that have happened in the last six months nine months ago the municipalities were saying oh heck no oh that's not gonna true be any cannabis oh no not within a thousand feet of schools lock it out in the desert and and now all they're saying is there's no neon signs. Well, maybe we can move a few months forward there and and uh, prove that we're dignified, sincere, you know, training driven, certification driven. Maybe they'll back off of us then. That's I know true. I'm, and then we can get the girls with the tassels out. And a good, <laughs> and good community partners. 420 nurses need unions too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, if you are a student and a medical marijuana patient, you better not attend UNLV. Nevada Regents gave approval to a campus ban on medical marijuana, saying that it could jeopardize $500 million in annual federal funding. The Board of Regents approved the amendment by a 12 to 1 vote uh, this last Thursday that would add medical marijuana to the list of controlled substances barred at campuses and Nevada system of higher education facilities. The measure will be up for final approval in December. Let us not forget, we have an election come November. If That's true. you are a resident, if you are a student, if you are a parent of a student, if you are an advocate or a medical marijuana patient, and it is okay for these patients, these students, to be on Oxycontin and lithium and a whole host of other pills that can do so much more damage to them, and they're worried about their little federal little... Funding. Purse, yes. Mm -hmm. Then vote for those people that supported a ban from people taking their medication that is legal under the law in the state of Nevada. Well, is marijuana the only medication that's banned? Or, I mean, or is it just a whole host of other medications? No, they're adding medical marijuana to a list of controlled substances. Okay, so well, con so while well, you can be drunk, true. Yeah, I'm pretty sure SB 374 decriminalized medical cannabis and made it so that it's not a Schedule One drug. I'm pretty sure. I no, SB 374 didn't, but we just um, our our subcommittee just voted to uh, to reschedule it to two. So then it now it has to go up to the judicial committee, and then it has to go through um, then it has to go through two uh, legislative houses. And appropriations yeah yeah it's gonna cost money yeah yeah well and that's the solution and there's a lot of fundamentalist people out there that have taken off in the wrong direction of the federal drug-free workplace act mm -hmm. and and so 
these fundamentalists threaten municipalities and states with losing federal funding. But the fact of the matter is, is that Federal Drug Free Workplace Act only says that states have to maintain a list of resources in case people have sub substance abuse problems. And I believe they have to have a, uh, an employee assistance program and then maintain a policy of no schedule one drugs. So maybe I guess that's where they're getting confused. Here. Well, I think, yeah, I think it is because of the schedule one drugs thing. But it, um, recently my work uh, has has come around. Um, you know, I had a little talk with them and said, you know, that every single one of these schools that we have and every single one of these campuses that we have uh, are in medical marijuana states, except for our newest campus in Houston. And so you guys need to really rethink your policy on this. And then uh, they listen to me and, and uh, now it's basically you just can't look like you're stoned at work, you know. So I was like, I'm fine. I never look like I'm stoned. <laughs> I've never seen you st stoned, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is fantastic. Well, lawyers battle over marijuana laws and pending legislation. Hey, I just saw Steve Wilson yesterday at Starbucks. And well, I thanked him. We haven't gotten that far. Okay. Hop back in your little box. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so excited. I know you're so excited. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. In recent weeks, outside the regional justice system, people armed with clipboards have asked lawyers and defendants alike to sign a petition to regulate marijuana just like alcohol. Our friend, Senator Tick Siegerbloom, who authored the law establishing medical marijuana and dispensary said the group's goal is to get 105,000 signatures by November to and have recreational marijuana legalized through a ballot initiative by 2016 at the latest. Well, you know what? This is Dan and I have been talking about this one. Um, uh, the last time you were here, we were talking about this one, and and you had me putting you in touch with some of the people who are running this. So, so what's your take on this? So, uh, well, you know, I mean, there's there's activity all over the country for 2016 ballots, for uh, 2015 ballots. I hear a couple of states. Um, right now, um, my uh, our crew is working in Oregon on the uh, on the uh, uh, Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, um, which is on the two four 2014 ballot this November. And a lot of people think that that's uh, kind of like the pivot election there in, in Oregon. Um, I've talked with a lot of national leaders and folks think that if we win Oregon, it will propel us forward. And if we lose Oregon, it could move us backward. To see the signature gathering going on in Nevada, except for in my hotel, <laughs> <laughs> where they're taking my smoking rooms. Um, uh, I, th I think it's a good move forward. Now, now the petition is... is predominantly being funded by a group called Medi uh, Marijuana Policy Project. MPP. Yep. And uh, so I talked to Rob Campia the other day about it, uh, just briefly. Got some names. You put me through to uh, Greg. I think we exchanged some Facebooks. Uh, I talked to Tick a little bit about it. Um, there's a good opportunity for this to happen in a way so that if we do gather the signatures by the middle of November, then the legislature can act, um, putting it on the ballot, uh, if we don't get the signatures by November, then uh, we can still come back with a with a constitutional amendment. Now that'll require another 20 to 25 percent in signatures. I don't know the exact number in Nevada, but just to see the momentum here in in Nevada uh, and then across the country, we we now have 34 states that have some sort of cannabis laws. There's only 24 states with flower laws. <coughs> Excuse me, but there are uh, there are a total of 34 states now. Now I know that uh, some state leaders are getting together and talking about, uh, uh, and I'm not gonna use any names, but uh, even some local state leaders here, uh, folks from California, uh, other, other areas, those leaders are getting together to talk about maybe possibly uh, um, making a move for a constitutional amendment, which I think is probably overkill. Um, but it'll be a good public relations, uh, public education campaign. And uh, so, frankly, uh, even though I was mad about losing my smoking room, which are precious to me, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I signed the petition, and, uh, and I think it's something that's uh, it's, it's, it's a good momentum for us. 
Well, we we had I had some people that voiced their concerns about this that we don't even know how the um, medical state here is going to work. We we have already been a grow your own state, and that um, that the dispensaries aren't up in and running yet, so they don't even know you know how this you know the recreational thing would go and everything. And you know, and I said you know. It's by the time we get the dispensaries up and running and the grow is up and running, then we're going to be figuring something else out. And this is what this is, I believe. Well, when we uh, when we started first drafting Amendment 64 in Colorado, which at the time uh, the baseline for it was kind of the baseline for this, it was called uh, regulate like alcohol. Um, uh, we we put a uh, uh, before I pulled out of the drafting process, we put in a grandfathering clause in Amendment 64 or what became Amendment 64 that has now allowed a lot of the dispensaries in Colorado to be grandfathered in. Now the municipalities um, elected to uh, support legislation that allowed it so that uh, certain municipalities could grandfather five dispensaries or five uh, production or processing facilities at a time, take them from medical and turn them into recreational. I'm sorry, adult use, uh, adult use tax to regulate. So, um, um, yeah, I think it's good. Uh, it's good momentum. Well, when I was in Colorado, they had a different price for uh, medical use versus uh, adult use or adult recreational use. So they, the medical use, um, you know, was much less. The, the the adult recreational use was taxed at a higher rate, um, and we you know, and it was just it was just a lot more money, and it was different meds too. So, you know, see a lot of folks, things, so, some things that our, our, our folks, our patients, and, and, and also our, our operators need to understand, um, patients are not, don't pay taxes for prescribed medications. That's but, true. But the pharmaceutical companies pay tremendous fees and taxes. And uh, so, yes, recreational, let me introduce you to my $10 pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Uh, which it costs about 30 cents to produce and is nine dollars and fifty cents in taxes um rec uh, adult use tax and regulate i mean we call it tax and regulate cannabis yeah when we're talking about uh, adult use so um yeah i mean there's there's going to be a higher price but uh, that price should go into public services and other things People are, you know, they're just so ready to tax it and regulate it. And in the words of Senator Siegelblum, you know, make some money on it. It's just perfect for our economy. Matter of fact, it is a no-brainer, you know. But I, I, I would mind moving in that direction, but I would just like to see how we do uh, medicinally getting that set up and running first. Well, I think it'd be just a natural progression, actually, to 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 from um, medicinal use to adult use. Um, and we're going to have more on this conversation when we get back from our break and with our 420 moment. And uh, we'll see you soon. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Las Vegas Hibfest is here, October 4th, with live performances from Burlas, yeah, welcome to the wax room, Baby Bath, Cypress Hills, Sed Dog, Dub C, 
Marlon Asher. Call me the Ganja Farmer. New Kingston. And a surprise performance from the LBC. Fifty bands, DJs, speakers, and comics. All at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest, October 4th. Get your tickets now at all diversity tattoo and smoke shop locations. And at LasVegasHempFest.com. That's LasVegasHempFest.com. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer. Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. And today for our 420 moment, we have a former 420 moment guest, the Dr. Stephen Fry on the phone. Uh, Doc, Dr. Fry, how you doing? Hey, I'm great. I just can't wait for the day when we can all hang out in, in Denver and puff a few puffs and party together and not have to worry about any of this crap anymore. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, so you can't wait until we can take a big, long vacation, huh? We got that right. Well, I'm on vacation. I've been on vacation since June, uh, whatever the election day was, June 11th. So. Oh, must be nice. I'm just getting ready to go back to work, but it's been wonderful, yes. The main reason I'm calling today is to let you know that uh, I have been active in the Nevada Psychiatric Association for the last 15 years since I've lived in Nevada, and the American Psychiatric Association since Columbus came off the ship and I was first licensed as a psychiatrist. And I have been finally able to convince the Nevada Psychiatric Association that we need to pass a resolution to change the classification for marijuana since it is absolutely positively, uh, positively unequivocally not a class one, excuse me, schedule one narcotic. And so since I have been screaming and yelling and ranting and raving for so many of the years, in order to shut me up, they have finally decided that this is a good idea. So we are proceeding with this resolution it's going to take a while before it goes up through the ranks but that would uh, put the psychiatric association at the forefront of where it should have been a long time ago in terms of telling the truth about marijuana that it is absolutely not in the same category with heroin meth etc so well, i mean uh, they, if, you, if you're going along that it, it's absolutely not in the same category as cocaine and yet they want to do it and they want to make it a schedule two like cocaine I understand, but I mean, it really should be unscheduled. <laughs> That's uh, true. But you know, if, if, if we if any progress will be progress, and so uh, we will see what happens. But at least uh, from this perspective, we have the uh, the southern the the southern Nevada uh, psychiatric society is is willing to go forward with it. That has to go to northern Nevada, then it goes to the uh, the the western region, and finally up to the American Psychiatric Association. Woohoo! Thank you, Doctor Fry. And as so usual, say again. As usual, uh, Doctor Fry, uh, you're at the forefront of uh, of necessary and uh, progressive change, and uh, just so glad to to, to know you. And, uh, and yeah, no, this is uh, I mean, this has been my passion now for a decade, and I continue to work on it. It's just frustrating that this state, which should have been first, with I mean, if we've got you know legal gambling, illegal prostitution, and free alcohol, when you put a nickel in a slot machine, we should have been first with legal marijuana and we're still thinking around you know with trying to get the medical dispensaries open you well know, you know they're, they're, the dinking will be over come november <laughs> no less well, dinking I, no, no more no more dinking <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's you know they're making such a big deal out of this whole thing i mean i, I spoke up when they first uh, started talking about it at City Hall, and they wanted to make Nevada a leader in the medical dispensers. Said, wait a minute, wait, we're, we're 16 years late on that boat. You know, this is 1996, 18 years already. 1996, the first dispensaries in California. We are not going to be the leader. Nobody starts anything 16 years or 18 years later and is a leader. Let's just get them open and take care of the patients and stop, you know, uh, making this a big deal. Anybody that wants to buy it can buy it. The only question is, are we funding education or are we funding cartels? There's no shortage of finding pot on any street corner in any city in Nevada. You it's are available. You are absolutely right, Steve. And I got to tell you, um, before I started this campaign, the best, the best place I could have found uh, uh, cannabis was from my teenage kids uh, uh, yep. because they got it at high school. 
And yeah. now at least they got to go to somebody 21 to, uh, to uh, or I mean, go to a doctor to uh, get it from a dispensary. You know, that's true, Dan. That's true. I, I, my daughter, my daughter was going, when she was going to high school, she was telling me she wasn't feeling well. I said, well, why don't you stay home? And she goes, well, I got to go, I got to go to school so I can score some weed. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And and that was the God's honest truth. She was like fifteen I mean, and, or sixteen and the, at the time, and 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 I looked at her and I said, "Well, thank you for the truth, and continue to shock me, but keep continue to talk to me." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Nevada has the highest teen uh, drug use in the nation, and the highest uh, heroin overdose in the nation, and you know we still we 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 are the world's greatest head in the sand ostrich head in the sand state in in the in the country. I mean, we just have all these huge problems, and we. We ignore them all to the max, and you know because we have all the glitz of Vegas and Lake Tahoe and Reno, everybody thinks we're a fabulous place, and we are a spectacular place to visit, but just a horrible place to live and raise your family and try to get health care. That's the problem. Well, you know what? We can only change it one one law and one person at a time. And thank we you, Doctor Fry. Thank thanks, you, Doctor Fry, for, for calling thanks. in. Keep up the good work. Thanks much. Bye bye. Thank you, okay, doctor. you two can be a 420. Uh, you can suggest somebody for a 420 moment, um, like Doctor Fry or, or anyone you want. I'm going to put something up on our Facebook page so that uh, anybody can suggest uh, somebody for our 420 moment. If you suggest somebody for our 420 moment and we use the that person, we'll give you a free Hemp Fest ticket. So. Make sure to go on there and vote for your favorite person for the 420 moment. Now, a little more local news from Raymond. What do you got, Raymond? Well, back to your friend uh, from Starbucks, oh. uh, District Attorney Steve Wilson. Oh, yeah. Um, Steve uh, recently um, was in the news. He wants the state's marijuana DUI law change. Determining whether a motorist is under the influence of marijuana is much more difficult than determining whether they are under the influence of alcohol. Uh, Nevada's um, DUI marijuana laws need to be changed to reflect the impairment of the driver, not just the standard of blood level. According to the Clark County's top prosecutors, some lawmakers and advocates. In Nevada, if there's enough THC in the blood system, despite having passed a field sobriety test, the driver is per se guilty of DUI of a controlled substance. Per se, meaning the driver is guilty without consideration of extraneous factors. Well, you know, and this is a great direction to be heading for Nevada because, you know, I can wake up and be over the limit, and I know Kurt wakes up and is over the limit. Um, but anybody that is doing any um, any RSO, Rick Simpson Oil, Phoenix Tears, any anything like that is going to be over the limit as soon as they wake up in the morning. And it doesn't even matter if they've medicated or not. And so to make that uh, a level of impairment is just crazy. Um, you know, I, I drive perfectly fine, and I don't medicate before I drive, but I'm, I'm suspecting with the amount of edibles and the amount of years that I've been uh, a medical med marijuana patient that, you know, if I, had a, if I had a blood test, then I'd be over the limit, and I'm not impaired. So one of the things uh, that, that, you know, in the, in the ballot industry, as we call it, um, you know, a lot of people live under the mis under misconception that uh, you can write a perfect ballot or you can make a perfect perfect piece of legislation. In the ballot industry, in the in the legislative industry, we know that we try to get things off the ground. And what's Nevada's uh, two nanograms? I think it's yes, two nanograms two, per milliliter, which I think is the worst in the in the world. And uh, and we've got uh, union uh, folks that are uh, uh, making. Uh, Rick Simpson types oil type oils are they're called external and internal and and if you use those and they're really hemp based products and if you use them you wake up in the morning like you said uh, over the limit so but rather than accepting that law what we have to do is is now we turn around and and we go back and we fix it yeah and uh, and and that's one of the things we try to do all over the country is help See, our, our folks don't understand and, and, and continually, I'm not talking about us here, yeah. um, continually make the mistake that they think that A, when a law is passed, that that's the way it is forever. It's not. That's yeah. just where it starts. And B, nobody gets a perfect law. 
from the no beginning. Thing. Not the well, you know, the thing is, is that, it, in, and you're right about this, Dan. When you write the law, you have to take in consideration what can be passed. Exactly. What everybody is going to vote for, what everybody's going to jump on board with. And sometimes you have to give a little and sometimes you have and sometimes you have to write stuff in there just so that, you know, the the uh, the police union will, will sign on with it. The sheriffs, you know, will sign on with it. Then you can go back and tweak it later. But if you try to write a perfect law that that all the advocates agree with well guess what the lawmakers aren't probably going to vote for it yeah absolutely there's, right there's a phrase that people use when you try to pass a perfect law and it's called we're not in kansas toto <laughs> <laughs> but it's also why it's so important that we support you and the other folks on the commission and other elected folks that are that are trying to help support bureaucrats that are trying to help um be, because we all know in the in the political industry that it's not where we're going to stay it's where we start and so we've started from a pretty bad place on that one i got to tell you i walked away from initiative 502 in washington state when it got to five nanograms i didn't know we had two nanograms in in sb374 so um the go two, fix it jen and I, we, we're going to support you we're, mm. i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to fix it our last uh, subcommittee um for the judiciary advisory board for medical marijuana basically said that that not only are we going to do the nanograms per deciliter but we're also going to attack um the job um angle for because you know for employment if you're employed and you're a medical marijuana patient, even if you live in a medical state like Denver, uh, you can be fired from your job for uh, for having it in your system. Um, there's the story in in C uh, in CNN, I guess, about this kid that he was paralyzed in a car crash at the age of 16, and he was using medical marijuana since 2009 in Denver with a card, and um, his employer at Dish Network asked him to go take a random drug test, and he wasn't surprised when he failed, and he or he came back positive for marijuana. But he told them that he had his card, and he uh, was fired for violating their drug policy. So people aren't, you know, people aren't aware. They think, okay, in Denver, it's all little lambs skipping through fields, and you know, and happy <laughs> people and everything else. But there are still some, there are still some really unfair laws that everybody has to go out and tweak and you know and try to get people elected that'll help you if lawmaking was fair we would all have health insurance we would all have wonderful schools we would have fantastic communities with great infrastructure lawmaking is not a fair process and it's really tough for for good lawmakers that are trying and we need to figure out how to get behind them and understand why they do the things they do and then support them on doing them and then they support us on going back and changing it and that's true. You need to you need to make uh, friends. You need to write letters to your policymakers, uh, to your electeds, um, stating what your position is. Not only that, you can put your money where your mouth is and donate to them, or help with their letter writing campaigns. People, if you if you go out and you work for a person's campaign, you get the access that nobody else is getting. Mm -hmm. And you get access to that person and their thought process, and you may be able to help them shift their thought process to one that is more in line with what, you know, your group or you personally believe. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the way the system is designed. And that's why it's important that we get involved in the campaigns, you know, and, and support these folks. Well, I got a little more news out of Colorado. The uh, Stanley Brothers, we've all heard of them, the people who came up with the Charlotte's Web Strain. They're now trying to expand their business federally. So. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. For years, uh, the, the Stanley Burgers, who sell a non-intoxicating strain of cannabis that's gained national attention as a treatment for epilepsy, have grown their medical marijuana in greenhouses under the tight state and federal regulations. But this year, they are not only growing marijuana outdoors by the acre, they also plan to ship an oil extracted from their plants to other states. So drug is trafficking? Just, that is drug trafficking. Well, see, That's what, federal well, drug trafficking so what, right there. What they're, what they're doing is they're justifying this by with a simple somatic swap. They now call their crop industrial hemp based on its low levels of THC, the psychoactive ingredient in pot. So the farm bill made, made some inroads, but parts of that farm bill don't even take effect until January of 2015. 
Other parts don't take effect until June of 2015. A lot of folks, uh, especially uh, these publicly traded stock corporations, they put out these tails on the wires trying to increase the value of their stock and their, and their companies. And, and uh, I, I know Josh and the Stanley Brothers. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, they were some of our first union members in Colorado, although they are not anymore. Um, and and it, it's a fantastic strain. And I remember when they used to grow that strain, and dispensaries would call it pretendica because it looked so good and it smelled so good and it was so cannabis-esque but if you consumed it it did not get you high and the dispensaries would would take high cbd strains uh, cannabis and they would they would call it pretendica and they'd put signs up and say you have to watch out for this you know with their buyers now we turn around and this it's a uh, you know, this type of strain, which they don't own. I mean, nobody owns high CBD. They do have a, a good marketing thing going with the, with their name. And, and, and they, I think they got great intentions, but I would really caution people about thinking that they're gonna be shipping things across state lines or acting like schedule one federal banks or, you know, those, that stuff is-, is Well, uh, my whole beef with the Stanley Brothers is that they claim to have a waiting list that's 9,000 people long waiting for their strain when they could tell people, hey, there are other strains out there yeah. and not have these sick people on a waiting list. That's right. My beef number two with them is if they've got a, if they've got a list 9,000 people long in Colorado, then don't come to Nevada. Stay in Colorado, grow more there. Take care exactly. of the people you got. Yeah. Exactly. And my beef is, you know, the mama talking about, you know, how much millions of dollars can we make out of my daughter's illness? I heard that at the Clark County Commission meeting. And I thought, how reprehensible are you? you? As a mother, your number one priority should be the safety and welfare of your child. Not, Not exploitation. No. Exactly. Yes. Well, and, and that's the other thing is that they're exploiting a child's illness to build a name for a strain that we used to call swag. We've, we've got union folks in Washington State that produce the same strain with the same effects, and it costs about $2 a unit, where they're selling it for, I believe, $800 a unit. Wow. I believe. I believe. I, I yeah. Mean, maybe a little bit off. So they're so they're they're getting all they're pumping all of the uh, media for you know the popularity of this stuff and charging for it. Well, that's why you want to stick with union products. The, the union folks not only are are working under you know more stringent caution, more stringent uh, effectiveness, but also uh, have a better approach to uh, to dealing with patients, and that's why you want to stick with the union folks you got well, guidelines training education those are the things that union people are all about and i support that wholeheartedly well th so that's a, a little bit more about the union here in nevada there's uh several uh, medical cannabis shops that are already signed up with you guys saying that uh, they support you and you guys support them and there's going to be union training and uh, a journeyman program here and everything else um, so, when do you anticipate this, you know, getting up and running and, and people are able to say that they are, that they can join the union after the shops open? So we've got, uh, we've got somewhere around 21 neutrality agreements, uh, with, uh, cannabis, uh, industry, um, groups. And of that, uh, there's a dozen that are already union in other states. Uh, so they're just coming to Nevada as union operators. Uh, we've met many new people here in Nevada um, that, that we've signed neutrality agreements with. And uh, there are other people that we just probably uh, don't want to work with um, just because the level of, uh, of professionalism probably isn't going to be there and they're probably not going to do things uh, in, in a way that we need to, you know, we want our members to work in good certified environments where we want to bring an apprenticeship program here we want to bring training uh things we've done in other states and uh and by the way you know thank you jen for all you've done to help us uh unionize this state we're going to have a very strong unionized industry in nevada similar Can't to wait. culinary's grasp on on the uh on the uh, destination resort industry and and the uh, gaming industry and we're really looking forward to it here and uh and we just want to thank everybody i want to thank everybody that's helped us worked with us uh guided us and, and especially we can 
which is our number one partner, our number one coalition partner in, in Nevada. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank and you. But, but back to um, back to you guys. Um, when do you think that we're going to have these uh, journeyman training programs, stuff like that, up and running? What's well, your well, anticipated start date? I know you're you're kind of the figurehead. You're the you're the guy that yells charge and is the first one in there, and then you let let everybody else kind of just you know get the industry kind of going. But do you guys have an anticipated date of? So uh, in California, it took uh, four years to design the program and bring it to where it's at, which is almost. Uh, implemented uh, by the Department of Industrial Relations. But there was a lot of hard work that went in California uh, from the groundwork. And uh, we won't have to do that much here in Nevada. I'm hoping that we have a good certified training uh, apprenticeship program, UFCW apprenticeship program here that's certified by an education agency within a year from today. I, I hope that we're up and running and, um, and providing those classes along with our good employers here. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, we're going to go to a break now. And when we get back, we'll talk to Dan Rush from the USCW some more. And then we'll have more from regional news. And we'll be giving away some HempFest tickets. So oh, yeah. Get your phones get, ready. Get your phones ready. Phones ready. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000 that's 702-967-0000 or visit us at tsivegas.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I was just talking to our board person here, and uh, uh, we're going to have HempFest call in, like, right now. If you're the fifth caller, you get Hemp Fest tickets, a pair of them. 702-731-1230 or 866-820-5528. Well, I was talking to uh, our, our engineer here, and somebody called in a day after and asked for Hemp Fest tickets. Come on, stoners. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they they were on medicated time. Leave them alone. <laughs> they were going to call in, but then they got high. Then they got high. <laughs> then they got high. <laughs> well, USA, USA. Okay, what getting medical marijuana is like today? During Prohibition, people were able to legally consume alcohol if they received a prescription from a doctor. And don't forget, one of our... Our own president used cocaine as a medication back in the day. Um, similar to how residents in some states are able to legally consume marijuana, here's how that worked. In, in all 48 states, Alaska and Ohio, and I'm sorry, Hawaii weren't states then, um, medical liquor was regulated by the U.S. Treasury Department and not the states. 
much like medical marijuana is. So it seems like going in the past and going in the forward, you know, you had um, medical people giving you the liquor and now they're giving you your weed. Well, you know, a lot of people wondered in the beginning why we had such a strong uh, understanding of, of how this process would work, getting the states to regulate and then, you know, figuring out what our agenda will be moving forward federally. And uh, um, alcohol prohibition was actually part of that, the end of alcohol prohibition was done by the American Distillery Union, which is now the distillery division of UFCW. So um, I actually got to work with the folks that worked for the folks that participated in, that, in ending alcohol prohibition. And we're really following the same path dry states, wet states, dry counties, wet counties. Um, and and I, I think that we'll see a lot of familiarities. And if we stick to that process, it works. That's true. You know, the people, people that know history, uh, you know, can, can really follow, follow along and help this regulation process. When, when I first started uh, the social group on meetup, I started looking at other states and other states had meetups and other states had social groups. And I said, you know what? Maybe we need one here six years ago and nobody else was doing it. And, and now, you know, it's a regular thing. Now people are starting more meetups. People are starting more social groups of medical cannabis here in Nevada. And just looking at other states history, that's where I'm getting my ideas. You know, so that's, you know, if you look at other histories that are that are out there, you can <laughs> you can pretty much follow along and, you know, and get some really good ideas about where to go. And if you want to figure out where we're going, just look at how history happened and you can see uh, the direction we're heading in. You, you were talking about your classes before we went to break. And I want to go on record and say this, sir. I would love to be your first student that signs up. You are absolutely number one on the list let me know where when and Stuart will be there <laughs> <laughs> that's raymond. Right, yes. yeah. that's funny. raymond raymond well, you are number one on the list well we have a winner of our Hempfest fest tick tickets so uh anna hi how are you doing great congratulations I'm excited thank you so much i deeply deeply appreciate it um i follow you guys on facebook and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly like, super excited and i'm definitely going to be there congratulations I'm actually, uh, a patient myself Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So will, I'm. Will we see you Saturday at our patient's first meeting? Uh, actually, uh, what is it? Saturday. This Saturday? Yes, at 2 o'clock at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Actually, uh, yes, I will actually be there. I did not know about it. Um, I didn't see the advertising on that one. But well, yes. we do have a we have a meetup group um, that it's a it's a patients meetup group where people that want to be patients or, or people that want to find out about, um, you know, medical marijuana in Nevada. If you'd like to come to our meeting um, this Saturday at 2 p.m., it's at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf right across from UNLV. And okay. if not... Stop by our booth at Hempfest and say hi, Anna. Okay. Oh, we got to make sure we get her, her tickets. I actually was at the library at the Las Vegas. Uh, I, what is it? The Clark County. Yeah. That's right. I, I was there too, and I, I honestly, remember. I'm loving the, you know the movement that you guys are doing. I'm I'm super excited for everything that's going on, and you know you guys are. I follow you guys because honestly, you guys are doing a great job, and I deeply appreciate you guys so much. So. Well, thank you so much, yeah, and congratulations again on winning your tickets. We'll make sure somebody takes them. We'll make sure we got your information, and we'll make sure that uh, somebody takes those tickets if you don't get them before then. And oh, stop. definitely. Thank you so much. Deeply appreciate it. I'll be listening all the time. And all stop, right. stop by UFCW's booth like you did last time because I remember I will. talking I will. to you at the library. And, and yep, congratulations. I was there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. I got you guys' stuff. And, yep, and I will be there actually on Saturday. So that's awesome, too. Cool. Okay. We'll see you then. And I'll see you guys at the booth at, at you know, uh, at the okay, thanks. Okay, we'll see you there. So, um, I got some uh, news out of Washington, D.C. The U.S. government is to grow 30 times more marijuana. So, the government has upped the quantity of marijuana it's growing this year to more than 1,400 pounds from the originally planned 46. So. We've got union operators that dwarf that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really? It's time for the government to catch up. All right, I think Raymond had a story. Uh, well, grow in Nevada will be affected. 
September 23rd. Oh, the stakeholders meeting. Yes, the stakeholders meeting. Public comment on Nevada's administrative code limiting, I'm repeating, limiting the cultivation of medical marijuana and square footage of medical marijuana cultivation would be needed to support the medical marijuana needs of in Nevada. Okay, so what this letter was basically is they sent out a letter, uh, the state sent out a letter to everybody that's interested that they received two to three times um, of the amount of grows that they Square originally footage. put in the in the bill, the square footage, they said that they would need what was it like six hundred and fifty thousand to one million square footage would be needed to support the medical marijuana needs. And they received two to three times that for cultivation here in Nevada. And so they what they want is everybody to come out on the twenty third and voice their opinion. Do you think that we need more? square footage and that we can accommodate all of these people who want to grow here in Nevada or do you think that they should decline a bunch of people from cultivating here in Nevada and limit that well, you know who I blame I'm sorry go ahead no Raymond so you know in California there's over a million patients and there's under a million square feet of uh, a production uh, uh, of licensed uh, um, producers producers and uh, there, there's not enough medicine in California for the patients. I blame Oprah because everybody got a car. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, you know what? Actually, what I'm, I'm flying somebody out from uh, Denver, um, Timothy Tipton, and he's been in the movement in Denver for a long time. Um, he was part of the UFCW, not the cannabis workers, but uh, some, other, uh, some other division that you guys have. And um, he's been in the cannabis movement for well over 20 years. And he's coming out to speak about this um, about this subject because there are shortages for patients mm -hmm. in Denver. There are shortages everywhere. for patients in, in in California. There are shortages for you know patients everywhere that they are Wa growing. Washington State doesn't have enough medicine on the counters for patients, and they can't keep enough uh, 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 adult. Uh, tax and regulate cannabis on the on the counters either. And remember, Main Street Dispensary shut down oh, yeah. rather than selling in, swag. In in New Mexico, uh, I just went and testified before a, uh, a medical advisory board hearing, a statutory medical advisory board hearing, uh, talking about uh, the uh, the dispensaries there have to close down for sometimes 20 out of a out of a 90 day period they have to close down for 20 days because there's not enough medicine because they're limited in the number of plants that they can have plus the number of clones that they can have let us not forget that nevada is a reciprocity state too mm -hmm. so let's say we get patients from washington and colorado and these other states where they have no access to medication we don't know what the final numbers are going to be yet you know, because doors haven't even opened. Now, and you know, and that's true. And that would be a shame. Um, it, that would be a shame if we didn't have enough medication. During the last meeting of the legislative subcommittee that I was on, we voted to extend people's personal grows until 2018 because we were unsure about how this whole uh, dispensary thing was going to work. You know, once dispensaries come in, people were afraid that they would have to shut down their personal grows. Which we have claws and loophole and stuff like that in there. But um, not only that, but, you know, the, if we shut down people's personal grows and and all of these commercial grows are not up and going, we're going to face a huge shortage. And not only then not only are we not serving patients, but people are not getting to, to work. They're being laid off from work. And how can you expect somebody to support their family when uh, every other day they go into work and the, dispens the dispensary is closed because there's not enough medicine? All right, we have our patient first meeting coming up Saturday at 2 p.m. at Coffee... Bean and Tea Leaf. Bean. Coffee, Bean, and Tea Leaf at, across from UNLV. What else do we have coming up this weekend? Coming up this weekend, I think that's about it, believe it or not. Okay, well, we, we will be back next week. Thank Same you, bad Dan, time. for joining us. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, guys. For and congratulations us. to our Hemp Fest winner. Everybody be safe out there. Go ahead.